thank you so much for the lovely introduction. Um, and thank you all for coming and mostly for staying. Um, and thank you, Chard and Peter and Sundog, Drew, um, for pulling this all together. I'm going to uh, start with a poem by Pam Harrison. Some of you may have known her. She passed away on Monday. And we were in a poetry group together for, um, for a long time. And she's a, a beautiful poet. Even Song, The Lonely Hour. Cuckoos and blackbirds conclude their elegies for the late sun-flooded day. Ground doves croon to a sky turning from amber to a pure hyacinthine blue. Down at the cross, Chance Henry answers, thrumming sweetly on his lone steel drum. Centered in a crescent of tired children and old men, he looses a soothing reverie with the long bones of a ram. Cocks crow, dogs bark, settling. Balanced in thoughtful poise, young women carry water from the well. Chance Henry's music guides them down the rocky, darkened road. Shadows crowned with shadow gliding through the late moon, star-strewn quiet of the village night. Is the volume okay? Yeah. So I'd like to I'd like to read um, some poems from my collection. Why I never finished my dissertation, and um, this book came out right be right at COVID time, so I haven't read from it very often, very much. What stillness. Lily pads ripple in summer breeze as if they bloomed for me. Revelation white clouds float through a divine blue sky. No human voices break the stillness of this hilltop pond where I come to forget the foolishness of homo sapiens, where a trout leaps from the lake, splashes shining down, opening, opening a glimpse into the world below the surface. My dog, wet from her swim between the visible and hidden, shakes dots of sparkling light from her dark coat, forming a watery aura. What the sunlight does to water, stillness does to us. So, um, in honor of Pride Month, which is June, I'd like to read this one, Hindsight. I married my first husband to escape a privileged white life, to see what it would be like to be a Muslim wife, scarf haloing my face, to be needed as he needed a green card, because he was a hunchback and had few friends, and I was 19 and he was 30, so I could be different from the usual Upper East Side girl, because the difference in marrying him held less terror than sharing a kiss with a girl I liked from New Orleans. So um, I'm now married to Clara. Um, beyond, I don't think of her as woman or man, just as I don't gender sunlight on my face the first coatless spring day or wind lacing the waves. The particular beauty of her eyes and gait, the tilt of her head as she listens, exists in a realm evolved beyond any words I know. Soul beyond any description of rose or peony. The way she tends me as one would a flower, so my leaves droop and petals wither when she is away from me. And another one, um, a similar theme, and this was right around the time of our uh, marriage, which happened in Pomfret. That's where we were living, uh, very close to here. 
under the autumn sun. Man and woman join to make one flesh, the guy I thought my friend informs me. So how can you be married? I want to say something in response, but he turns ashen and walks away, his mournful words diminuendoing. I guess this is the modern world. I remember it a week after our marriage, when my wife approaches me, holding charred against her breast in this peaceful autumn sun. Though we know soon the ravages of a hurricane will scour us with hail and rain. She's been harvesting charred tomatoes, onions, a host of potatoes she raised from soil I helped make from compost we grew all winter. She kisses me openly, her lips sweet and fresh from tomatoes plucked from our one flesh-joined garden. Is that what you were talking about, Barbara? No, that's not the one you were referring to. Okay. Um, she says, you like one of my poems about a kiss. So um, I like to evoke my, my mother, my mom, who was a really nice person, learning by heart. I was seven, couldn't sleep, fearing my French teacher, afraid I couldn't learn a line I had to memorize. Mom trilling the night's loneliest hour at the piano, made up a lilting song to help me remember. I did, and still do, fingers running over the keys somewhere deep inside me. And um, this one is set in Provincetown. Gratitude list. Praise be this morning for sleeping late, the sandy sheets, the ocean air, the midnight storm that blew its waters in. Praise be the morning swim, mid-tide, the clear sands underneath our feet, the dogs who leap into the waves, their fur sticky with salt, the ball we throw again and again. Praise be the green tea with honey, the bread we dip in finest olive oil, the eggs we fry. Praise be the reeds, gold and pink in the summer light, the sand between our toes, our swimsuits, flapping in the breeze. They went so quiet. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read from is this. And in Pomfret we had um, we had bees, we had a lot of bees. And uh, we also had occasionally butterflies that we would, monarchs that we would find and bring, you know, watch molt. October. If you saw me driving in this pelting rain, you'd never guess my errand to buy lilies for my butterfly. He'll savor the flower's aroma this cold November day, since wild blooms have faded away. Octubre lives in a screened-in cage because I couldn't let him out in last week's snow, could I? He seems content, his feet sticky against the screen, pleased to drink when I uncurl his proboscis with a toothpick, dip it in honey water while he sucks through his trunk-like tongue. I say he because he has two spots like eyes on his hind side that indicate boy. Good for our family of two lesbians, two bitches, a shepherd in a lab, and 30,000 girl bees who spent the whole autumn dragging the hairy drones out of the hive, killing them, dumping the corpses in a heap out front. I'm just saying it's good to have some masculine energy around here. Even if it's just one monarch who hangs upside down all day and sometimes flutters his gorgeous wings. <laughs> to see it, we need to separate to see the life we've made, to leave our house where someone waits patiently warm beneath the sheets, to don layers of armor, sweater, coat, mitten, scarf, to stride down the frozen road, putting distance between us this cold winter morning, to look back and see on the hilltop our life lit from inside.
So um, I have I have the great pleasure to hang out with young people, very young people, uh, quite a bit these days. Breakfast conversation. I placed her favorites, fresh raspberries, string cheese, a glass of milk in the giraffe cup, on her high chair tray. As she munches away, swinging her short legs, she asks thoughtfully, Grandma, are you pooping? <laughs> I, I continue my bite of oatmeal, take a sip of coffee, respond, no, darling, how about you? She isn't either, as both of us wonder what to say next. <laughs> so, um, honoring uh, Mary Oliver in this poem. And I, I wrote this all in one burst after she passed away. It matters that Mary Oliver woke early and walked along the bay as morning sun tore the sheets of darkness from the sky. It matters that she carried a notebook and cared to look into a kingfisher's soul, to dig in wet sand for clams in which she later tasted the salt sea erupting in her mouth like sex, that she let the soft body of her body love what it loved, which was Molly. It matters that she loved a woman. It matters that we each wake to stride our own snow dunes, finding in each day something of value, even the last ash leaf hanging on a winter limb, shivering a bit, then falling into stillness, over and over to lose ourselves into something larger, something better. It matters that I clutch my stack of her books, those fields of light, now that her body has gone into the cottage of darkness. So Clara and I were very happy to be very involved in, in this church, and um, among other things, we sang in the church choir. An ordinary Sunday. On Sunday, I sing in the church choir, not believing in God, but holding a space for something. Some might call it spirit, an opening, a candle illuminating a cave. On Sunday, I climb the hill behind our house as the long winter thaws, and my dogs dig in wet loam. I wait for worries to relax their hold, for my mind to become one with the clouds calm drifting, the trilling of a stream rushing somewhere unseen. We need, I think, to let ourselves soften around hurt before we melt like spring snow into fields. So I let Dad in, decades past his death, find a few good memories, like stones just soft enough for polishing him filling the green glass vaporizer nightly so I won't get sick in my childhood winter's hot, dry air. Don, Dad donning an apron to cook for his skinny teen. I breathe in the care and nourishment he offered then and I receive today on an ordinary Sunday. So I'll read um, four short new ones. Some from my book that's coming out soon. Um, I guess they're all coming. This is called The Something. Time to notice drops of dew on every fallen leaf, to draw a finger through the tiny pools of light, to watch your body's shadow casting backward on the leaves, to feel the sun's surprising heat this late October day, time to feel the veil of something, the something that exists between me and her, invisibly pulling as I sit in sunlight, waiting for a single leaf to drop so I can catch it mid-flight. I can feel her texting, please bring mushrooms, I want to make a soup for you. My state. At daycare, she says, Sue serves us spoiled eggs. Oh, you mean boiled? No, spoiled, and I don't like them. <laughs> Later, I ask Sue, who elucidates, scrambled. In the parking lot, we talk license plates. Mine has a loon, she explains, and yours is green. 
Yes, yours is a loon because you're from Maine. Yes, Grandma, but I'm from license plate, too. <laughs> I squint into, sh into space, trying to imagine the state of license plate, but find a mind of scrambled eggs. <laughs> and so two more. Um, so one of my uh, one of my grandchildren, who's now eight, has struggled with uh, mobility issues, but she's walking. From such and this in this in this story, um, I take her to see her first movie, and it was in Hanover at the Nugget, and of course we were late. Um, so from such depths, we grope for seats in darkness made black by our sight, still used to the bright afternoon. As mermaids navigate with ease on screen in deep, dark seas. When the witch appears, Eleanor shouts to the room, It's going to be all right. And then again, when the shark opens its gaping mouth, when I, when I begin I to think I know from what depths her faith swims, having transcended at five her need for a wheelchair, walking freely into the theater into a future we adults once only hoped was possible. Halfway through, I whisper, want to get popcorn? But the pleasure of that distraction can't match her anticipation. No, Grandma, I want to watch. I know what's going to happen next. Later, a warm summer downpour turns the street to sea, soaks through our clothes as we stand under a cleansing eave, reach out our hands, sticky with ice cream. And I'll end with this one. Um, into the silky water. At almost five, she's learning to care how words can hurt, and so tells me, I look pretty with my tummy hanging out. We're both in bathing suits, and now I look down at my ample belly as she continues, I don't want to say you look silly. I take her hand, yes, darling, I understand, as we tiptoe through new grass to the summer pond, Grandma, you're beautiful, she speaks as we leap into the silky water like two glittering fish. <laughs> Thank you, guys.